Are you confused on what probiotic to buy? Well, today our topic is know before you buy, five things to consider when choosing a probiotic. So stay tuned to learn more. So there's a lot of probiotics out there and a lot of people don't even know why they would use a probiotic, which strains they would want. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you five things to know before you buy, five things to consider when choosing a probiotic and then help you try to find the best probiotic for you. So let's dive into that. Um, one thing, tip number one to consider would be what kind of health conditions you are having. For example, um, histamine. So if you have seasonal allergies, if your functional medicine provider, naturopath has said you have a histamine intolerance as far as you eat a low histamine diet, then you want to consider not purchasing certain strains of, pro or taking in certain strains of probiotics because they can actually make the histamine problem worse. So there are some strains in the lactobacillus family um, that can make it worse. And they are, these are all hard names to pronounce, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Um, Lactobacillus bulgaricus, that one's not so bad. Um, Lactobacillus casei, and then the other one would be um, Lactobacillus del brucai. It's D-E-L-B-R-U-E-C-K-I-E. -E -E. So, those are the Lactobacillus strains that can worsen a histamine problem. And then, you would also want to think about some Streptococcus thermophilus is another a Streptococcus strain that's in a lot of blended probiotics and Bacillus coagulans and Bifidus lichenformis. So those could raise your histamine. So if you're having histamine issues, look at the label and choose ones that do not have histamine. I'll have a recommendation down below for a great one that is very histamine friendly. Number two would be to consider if you have been diagnosed with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, a lot of times people will have bloating after eating. Uh, they will just walk around bloated all the time. And sometimes IBS, it's called IBS, but it, it may come from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now to get that official diagnosis, you'd have to do a breath test and work with a functional medicine provider or some GI doctors do it too. Um, but uh, if you have that diagnosis or if you have taken probiotics and they make you more bloated, then you may have SIBO. So what I would recommend with that is to choose a probiotic that does not have a prebiotic in it. Now generally we think of a probiotic and a prebiotic as being very symbiotic and working well together and the prebiotic providing a food for the probiotic. And to learn more about prebiotics, I will link one of my um, prior videos on the microbiome and healthy foods for the microbiome because prebiotics are fibers. But those prebiotics, they are food for the probiotics, but they can also be food for the, what we call dysbiotic bacteria or the bacteria that are out of, out of balance and could be considered the bad guys when they're out of balance. So we could be feeding them too and causing more bloating because of that, um, of that prebiotic. So if you are having trouble with bloating or you have SIBO, and you have bloating from a probiotic, then choose one without a prebiotic and start low. Start with a low dose, and I know that sounds crazy that it's low, but like five billion, like a child's dose would be a good place to start. If you're still having trouble, then see your provider. You may need to work on the SIBO first before you try a probiotic. So those are like health things to consider um, when choosing a probiotic, uh, health conditions to consider. Now next, let's talk about amounts and strains and all of that. So do you get refrigerated or do you not? So tip number three, I would say is refrigeration versus non-refrigeration is really based on your lifestyle. So the ones that come in the blister packs where you just kind of pop one out and they're not in a big bottle, um, can be very safe non-refrigerated. And all of them are safe non-refrigerated, it's just some of the bacteria may die off and you're not getting all the benefits. But uh, we have a lot of technology over the last few years in probiotics and we there's a lot of great brands that are um, shelf stable. And I'll link some of those down below, the ones that I really think are, are good brands and you can um, look at those. And they're affiliate links and so they do help the uh, channel but they also aren't, aren't 
upcharged because of that. But I'll link some um, some ones that I like and that I've researched. Consumer Reports has done um, studies and made sure that the brands that I'm going to recommend have what they say they have in them. So shelf stable versus refrigerated is really based on you. Now there are some great brands that are refrigerated um, that I'll mention in the description down below, like Mega Foods, Mega Flora. Um, and I really like that one a lot, but then there's the Garden of Life and some Renew Life products that I like that are shelf stable. So as long as they're in that blister pack, they're generally good as shelf stable, and that's good for people that travel. And even the kind that are refrigerated can stay out of the refrigerator for a few days, even they say up to like a month, but just kind of the more they stay out, the, the more death of the organisms happens and you just don't get as much of a benefit maybe for the type that are intended to be refrigerated. And now let's talk about dosing. So probiotics should be dosed in billion units. So if you see something in the million, that's really low actually for a supplemented probiotic. Now when we're talking about food products like um, sauerkraut and kimchi and yogurt, those are usually in the million kind of category with dosing, which is great because anything in a food um Tight is it has a lot of other nutrients and kind of symbiotic things that can help you um, absorb what you're eating and help you absorb the probiotics better. But when you're trying to take probiotics for general health, for stomach problems, for autoimmune—I mean, not autoimmune—IBS <laughs> problems, or for autoimmune disease, immunity in general, you do want to actually, if you're really trying to target that, you do want to get the higher doses that would be in an actual supplement. So. Um, this would be tip number four would be we were talking about dosing. So we want for children to be in the five billion, anywhere between five and ten billion. If I have kids in my practice that are, you know, asthma, have asthma or really bad allergies or are celiac or have stomach problems, then we will usually do up to like the ten billion if they need it. But five billion is a general health um, guideline for dosing. For adults, you should usually be in the 10 plus, so 10 to 15. Usually I say like 15 to 20 billion units. Um, 20 is on the higher end, and that's more for if you are having like autoimmune disease, immunity problems, um, uh, fighting like cold season, um, like especially if you're on antibiotics, you want to be in the 20, probably even higher, like the 30 to 50 billion unit um, per capsule dosing. So those are some general guidelines for general health, 10 to 15 for adults. If we're going in for targeted kind of treatment, then like 15 to 20. If you're on antibiotics, I would say like 20 to 50, even up to 90. Now, targeted treatment can be even higher with certain conditions, in particular with certain conditions like irritable bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Um, sometimes a, a popular product with physicians is uh, VSL number three, and there is oh, many billion, I think 150 to 300 billion in that product. And then there's some specialty uh, supplement companies that we use that make those higher dose products. And, and we those would be chosen typically by a physician or a naturopath. Well, naturopaths are physicians, but uh, by uh, your either traditional physician, functional medicine physician, or naturopathic physician um, to, to to help you guide you in choosing one that was super high dose like that. So we're not really going to make that general recommendation uh, to use those unless they're um, recommended by a provider. So then the next um, thing to consider, uh, and number five, would be the strains. So with strains, we want a good variety. We want at least 12 different strains. Um, I like to have a variety of lactobacillus and bifidus strains in a product. Um, and now we can, again, micromanage those and individualize those, but again, work with your physician or provider on that um, because it really is dependent on you and what kind of thing that you're trying to work on. But in general, looking for a, a big variety of lactobacillus and bifidus with at least 12 different strains, balance between those two main groups is a good guideline. And if you're not having trouble with bloating with probiotics, then I would recommend getting a one with, that has a prebiotic in it. So I'll be talking about the, the combination of prebiotics and probiotics and how those can help to improve your immunity. So thanks for watching today. Uh, please comment down below if you have uh, 
gained any knowledge on uh, choosing probiotics, what you learned today, or maybe any questions you might have on probiotics, give this video a like if you liked it, and then uh, subscribe and hit the bell notica notification to be notified when I post videos every Thursday. So I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you.